The historical period known as the Renaissance spans from about 15th to the 16th century. Renaissance means rebirth of European culture, a general reawakening, a revival or rebirth of learning. During this time, Europe left behind the fixed ideas of the Middle Ages and created the beginnings of the modern world. Alright, let's dig deeper at the Dark Ages. Before the rebirth of the Renaissance century of history have been swept under the rug, this was a pretty rough time to be living in. People that you know today will be dead tomorrow. Europe was attacked by feminine plague, persecutions and a period where it was rarely interrupted by peace. This then led to humanism, secularism, individualism and rationalism. To extend the historical themes of Renaissance, where humanism explores the concept that places human beings as the centre of attention in life, not God or faith. Resulting Renaissance art portraying the human body as a thing of beauty in its own, not some medieval comic strip character whose only reason to exist was for the glory of God. That comes towards the father of humanism, Francesco Petrarch was one of the most influential humanists at the time. He built the biggest Latin and Greek library where he was researching for manuscripts throughout Europe. Then he came to classical writing like Cetero, Livy and Suetonius. Now, into the Renaissance art period, it was a period of nudity and contrapposto, viewing to ancient Greece and Rome of mythological subject and architecture. It was a time where emotions and gestures were conveyed through classicism and perspective. Let's talk about Giotto. Giotto is an Italian painter and architect from Florence who worked during the Gothic or Proto-Renaissance period where he produced extraordinary, lively yet harmonic composition and effective technique of shadowing. Giotto painted his figures with straight axles and lines producing figures that twisted around and completed each other's form. Dun da da! Renaissance architecture! The European construction of the period between the early 14th and the early 17th century, where it laid the principle of Greek and Roman architecture, of classical antiquity, and the work of Vitruvius. The themes followed Gothic architecture and were succeeded by the Baroque style. Main features like facades, columns, pilasters, arches, vaults, stones, windows and walls were all very important when mastering the details of ancient Rome. Renaissance architectural theory style became more decorative and ornamental with widespread of use of statuary. Alright, let's talk about Marco Angelo, who was one of the most influential architects at the time. He didn't know the follow traditional path into architectural design, but this allowed him to work less restrained than other classically trained designers. One of his amazing architectural projects, St. Peter's Basilica, where he made some key contributions alongside other famous names at the time. Marco Angelo was said to incorporate principles of perspectives and ideas stimulated by his experience with other mediums. The social status at the time, people would be divided into groups, those who pray, those who fight and those who work. 
Those who pray were the priests, which were considered the top of the social monarchy. Those who fight were the knights, who were considered middle class, and those who worked were the peasants. Large cities would be ruled by rich families such as the Medici family who controlled Florence throughout much of the Renaissance. They played a large part in the patronage of the arts and the political development of the city. The Birth of Venus is one of the most famous artwork by Sandro Botticelli and one of the greatest masterpieces of early Italian Renaissance. The painting is thought to represent the beauty of love in the neoplatonic sense.